Thank you. Right. Well, big, um, also a big thank you to Mr. Roger Carrier again. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start off with a little story. She was introduced to me as Kim. Eight years ago, in the aftermath of a not-so-clean divorce, she came to us, our neighbor from just around the block, with my mother in a huge mixture of anger, depression, and stress, and with me caught up in a video game addiction I'd thrown myself into in order to combat the sadness. <laughs> she showed us a way out. She showed us that there was a light at the end of this tunnel we were stuck in. She showed us one of the things that matters most in the world, something that everybody could use a lot more of these days. She showed us how to be happy, Coming over to her house every so often to watch primetime television, she would cook, she would tell us jokes, she would make us laugh, showing us that it was okay to relax, that it was possible to feel content. And it also never heard that she was a professional, professional massage therapist at the time. <laughs> and eventually she started giving me rides to school, telling me, you know, every day as I stepped up from her car, eat the bear tape. I never knew where that came from, but I understood what it meant. <laughs> And I then learned in the summer before 8th grade that she was my mom's partner. That they'd been together for about a year now, but just didn't know how to tell me. I could not have been more happy. <laughs> this, meant, this meant that Kim was going to be even more a part of our family. That we were going to be living together. That I was going to have another stepmom. And that, except, I wouldn't. The law wouldn't allow it. It was also that year that I, uh, that I attended my first protest. I couldn't believe that my moms would be denied the opportunity of getting married, even though they loved each other so much and so naturally so. So I went to a protest at this very place where we are right now, and I fought for my mom and I fought for Kim. Fought for the rights and fought for the possibility of my family being legally won. And I'm here today, in that same place of that protest, still advocating that idea, and still praying that one day it will be possible for all Americans to achieve that dream of having a family that our government recognizes. And that's why you're all here too, right? Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. I, um, I was actually at the Cafe Marmalade last night helping making signs too. Um, it's a wonderful place, you should go there sometime, get some coffee. Um, and I was just thinking this morning, I had made a sign at the cafe that it, it said on it, it said, when did we start making laws about love? And it seemed, you know, really passionate at the time, really, you know, go out there and yell your speech, but I realized this morning that that's not really right. You know, it's not we're not making laws about love. Like we, may, we may have laws to pro Proposition 8 in California, but by no means at all will my mom and Kim stop loving each other because of it. No one can be stopped because of that. So, that's why I'm here. I'm here to support their love, but I'm also here to support the possibility of them may possibly being able to visit each other in the hospital should something bad happen. Or, because we're in such a financial crisis right now, if something goes wrong, they can help each other. So, I want to be here to say that I support them with all of my might and all of my love. I could not love them more than I do right now. <laughs> And I want here to support change. Because, as you might know, a couple weeks ago, a certain man was elected president of this country. And though it may not happen right now, change is coming. Change is, it will come and it will happen soon. So please, let's not lose hope. Let's keep believing that it can happen because trust me, it will. Thank you.